his first address to the nation since taking over the country. Burkina Faso's new military leader says he's bringing back security and order to the conflict-ridden nation. As RT correspondent Paxton Boyd reports, the U.S. trained soldier says betrayal won't be tolerated as the United Nations urges him to stand down. After seizing power earlier this week, Burkina Faso's new military leader spoke on television for the first time on Thursday, promising a return to constitutional order when conditions are right. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Demiba has emerged as the leader of a junta that ousted President Mark Kabore, accusing him of failing to tackle rising militant violence in the West African country. We must significantly reduce the areas under terrorist influence and impact violent extremism by giving the defense and security forces and volunteers for homeland defense the will to fight and go on the defensive with adequate means. The coup was announced on state television Monday by a young officer. Beside him sat Demiba, a United States trained soldier who, according to the U.S. Africa Command, has participated in at least a half dozen U.S. training exercises. On Thursday, he called on the international community to support the country so it could emerge quickly and resume its march towards development. I understand the legitimate doubts raised by this break in the normal functioning of the state. I would like to reassure all friends of Burkina Faso, the country will continue to respect its international commitment, particularly in regard to the respect of human rights. Demiba also warning that betrayal against this transition will not be tolerated. I warn all those who will be guided only by their selfish interest that I will be uncompromising with the acts of betrayal of the aspirations of our people. In December, Demiba was promoted to commander of Burkina Faso's third military region, which is responsible for security of its capital, Ouagadougou. That promotion coming amid protests of surging violence. The United Nations Security General Antonio Guterres condemning the coup and calling on leaders to stand down. The role of military must be to defend their countries and their peoples, not to uh, attack their governments and uh, to uh, fight for power. For In Question, I'm Paxton Boyd. For more on this, we will turn to Ajamu Baraka. He is the national organizer for the Black Alliance for Peace and former VP candidate on the Green Party ticket. Ajamu, always good to have you. Um, so Burkina Faso's democratically elected president, Rok Kabore, was overthrown by his own military this week. The self-proclaimed new leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Damiba, has deep ties to the U.S. DOD. He's participated in more than half a dozen trainings with U.S. AFRICOM. Does this smell like a U.S.-led coup to you? It definitely appears to have the fingerprints of the U.S. all over it. It's quite clear that this is part of the U.S. playbook in trying to ensure that its interests will be protected in West Africa and indeed throughout the African continent. Um, they are not, they don't trust uh, the possibility of democracy. Uh, and so to ensure that they have in place those forces that will um, ensure that their interest, and their interest primarily right now is to make sure that uh, the Chinese or even the Russians don't have a real um, uh, stake in these countries. Uh, they are willing to uh, to support military interventions and the elimination of all forms of democratic procedures. Yeah, very good point. Now, since 2008, the during the Obama years, uh, American-trained military members in West Africa have attempted easily nine coups in the region. They succeeded in eight of them so far. Uh, over a billion dollars have been spent. Uh, with what the DOD and State Department call security assistance and to promote stability in the region. But is that really what's happening there? I mean, why is the U.S. investing so heavily in West Africa? The U.S. is pursuing a military first strategy in Africa, as it is in other parts of the world, even in, for example, in, uh, in Asia. Uh, so their investment is on the military side. Why we see other nations are attempting to 
gain influence in Africa by uh, providing support to the real developmental uh, challenges and issues that uh, these nations face. So they have put all their uh, money, all of their strategy in the military basket. Um, and they are quite aggressive in doing that. And what we see is the consequence is every place where you see significant U.S. military presence, instead of a, a reduction in tensions and violence, we see an escalation. So the strategy is to create chaos, uh, to uh, rationalize more U.S. intervention, as we will see in Burkina Faso, uh, in order for the U.S. to maintain uh, a physical presence and political influence in these various states across the African continent. Now, the, the new junta leadership there has not yet been formally recognized by the State Department. Demiba and his crew say the reason for this coup is that Kabore failed to stem jihadi violence in his country. Does their argument have any validity to you? Uh, none, none whatsoever. They're basically, the one of the reasons why you had an escalation of so-called jihadist activity in the country is the consequence of the U.S. Uh, with NATO overthrowing the government in Libya. And the consequence of that was um, um, uh, weapons uh, that proliferated across the uh, northern part of the African continent into West Africa, uh, and the enhancement, the military enhancement of all of these various uh, non-state forces. So, again, we see the, the uh, uh, amateurist uh, uh, policies of the U.S. Uh, that's responsible for these kinds of, 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 of issues developing in these countries. And again, the objective, the main point of all of this is for, uh, for the U.S. to maintain its ability to control politics and economics uh, on the African continent. And lastly, Ajamu, President Kabore was allegedly offered by some European states an emergency evacuation that he apparently declined shortly after the coup. He was then handed over to the army. So what is next for President Kabore? Is his life in danger? Well, that remains to be seen. It's a very dangerous situation. Um, and we understand that he's in, some, uh, in a military camp. Uh, there has not been any um, information on his his um, his, his his physical presence, uh, his, his status. Um, but it will be difficult for them to to move against him physically. But it is a very dangerous situation, and it, it, of course, everyone is demanding that he would be released and there will be uh, and return back uh, to a civilian government. Uh, and their democratic processes in that country. So hopefully he will be safe. Yeah, let's hope for a peaceful outcome. We'll continue to follow the story. Always appreciate your insight and expertise here. Ajamu Baraka, thank you.